In relation to the platforms built around Pacific leaders and Micronesian leaders, women leaders around gender equality, it's important to talk about male advocacy and the role of men because institutions are still male dominated and my, my, my Pacific male leaders still have a big role in not just implementing the work on gender equality but learning from women leaders on how to implement this work. But the focus on women's equality, uh, especially equitable measures, has to be at the forefront. Uh, women have to be given spaces, they have to be uh, given opportunity and, and not just talking about opportunities and measures but actually be given that. Uh, but my area of work is more on supporting that equality from addressing the violence that women face, whether it be in the workplace, in the home, in public spaces. In relation to violence against women policy and legislation, that's it. it is important to not just have these policies in place, but to also support the implementation and resourcing of it. And I think what's coming across really strongly with Micronesian women leaders is the importance of implementation and resourcing efforts to address violence against women as a means of achieving women's equality. I've not been to a triennial, but I think the role of men is to try and support as many women uh, to attend triennial. Uh, and the men who attend triennial have to be really clear about uh, what their purpose and their role is. Because of the Pacific's high prevalence of violence against women, a key focus will continue, should continue to be on response services. So counseling for victims, safe houses, um, referral pathways, uh, safe nets for women. That, that should continue to be a priority given the high prevalence. But I think also in terms of resourcing, what we can start to do is holding men accountable, uh, increasing the institutional um, capability of the police, of the courts to hold men accountable. Now, these don't take up a lot of resources, but they, they take more of a long-term investment in terms of the capacity of people you're trying to build. So I think what is important, my priority would be to continue supporting women's services, but to complement that with strengthening response services in holding men accountable for their use of violence. In terms of engaging with, uh, with men and boys in this area and men at the leadership level, I think what should be emphasized to all men doing this work is that despite our leadership and despite the influence that we can have, we don't have experiences of that women have the lived experiences of violence. I think what is critical and what we should try and escalate as male leaders is to get women more into the spaces of decision making, whether it be implementing legislation, amending legislation. Uh, we should involve them more in this space. I think this is something that we've talked about a lot of time as male leaders, but we're not opening up the space. And I think for me, something coming forward that we should push towards male leaders is actually giving up spaces for women to make decisions about their own lives and supporting them.